Hello and welcome to Apex! This video is going to just be a quick tutorial for teachers on how to navigate Apex for their students. So first to get to Apex, in Google you're going to type in apexvs.com and hopefully it brings you to this page. If it just brings you to a Google search, it's probably the first or the second option, but just click until you get to this page and then I highly recommend you bookmark this page so you don't have to find it that way every single time. At this point, you probably have a username and password, so please just take a second to type those in and go ahead and sign in. So every time you sign in, it'll bring you directly to this page, which is your dashboard. Your dashboard lists all the courses that you are a teacher in. What you are going to be looking for specifically is the NTMS tab, this one right here. When you click on that, you'll see the English and the math courses right within it. So everything's in that NTMS tab for you. In this tutorial, I'm just going to go over the English 8, but they're both the same layout, essentially. So there's three different things that you can press at this point. You can press English 8, the actual course title. You can press this, which is your gradebook logo, and you can press this, which is your data logo. I'm going to walk you through all of it, but first we're going to start with this button. So press on English 8. And what that's going to do is bring you to the overall layout of the course, and this is exactly what the students see. So if you haven't watched it yet, there is a tour an entire student tutorial showing them how to go through each of the assignments on here, what they're supposed to do, when they're supposed to reach out to their teacher. It's about 14 minutes long and I think it would help you as a teacher to see it the way that the students see it, but I'm just going to walk you through it rather quickly from the teacher perspective. So you can click on each one of these and see what the students see and navigate it a little bit more, but what you want to be looking at as a teacher are these three lines up here. If you click on those, it shows you the whole course outline by unit and you can um, drop down each of those units to see a little bit more within. So let's start with unit one. If I press this arrow, it'll drop me down to like the subunits within unit one. So the elements of literature is unit one, 1.1 is the first subunit, it's point of view. If I click on that, it shows everything that the student has to do in this 1.1 little subunit on point of view. So the first thing they have to do is a study. The study is essentially just notes, typically anywhere from like 10 to 20 pages long. Um, they have videos included in them. There's um, interactive quizzes, surveys, stuff like that to keep the student interested. But this is where they're going to be learning the content. After that, the checkup's just a quick little, maybe couple questions to make sure they went through the study, and then a review will help them review for the assessments. Now, the assessments are the next two things, and you can see that they're assessments because the points are listed right here. The first one is a practice, the next one is a quiz. The difference between the two is that a practice is a written assignment that students have to do, you know, by hand, and the quiz is online, typically all multiple choice, but sometimes there's some fill in the blanks. So it's up to you what you want your students to do for this course. You can go through all of the units, see which things are the best, and kind of go from there and base your course around all of that. But um, for students to do the practice, they can print it out or they can do it on a separate sheet of paper and they have to submit it to you somehow, whether it's through email or um, if you use Schoology, they might be able to do that by sending it just as a photo or even a scan. There's a lot of different ways that that can be done. Uh, but they don't have to print it. They could just do it on a separate sheet of paper. And then the quiz is entirely virtual. They just do it straight through Apex. Um, and then the thing that's nice about the quizzes is since it's all done on Apex, it's graded for you. So you can just see how they did. So that's what I'm going to bring you to next. So I'm going to go back to the dashboard by clicking up here on this other tab, right back to those three options. We just went over this. If you scroll over just a little bit, that spiral with an A on it, it even says view gradebook when you hover over it in case you forget the buttons. So you just click on that and it'll bring you to your gradebook. Now these are two sample students. You can probably see them as well because we don't have the actual students in it yet. But um, you can see that student 2021 hasn't done anything yet. That's what all those zero percents mean. And they haven't been on um, for the past 12 days. Days since their last access has been 12 days. So that's really not great. Um, this on schedule, just to go over this really quick, the on schedule percent doesn't really tell you too much. It just, it'll probably almost always say 100% or just saying that they're on schedule because students work at their own pace on Apex, so it doesn't really tell you too, too much. Uh, but their grade to date is important. This student, since they haven't done anything yet, has a zero, which makes sense. This student only has a 73.3, and I'll show you why in just a second. And the overall percent completed is 2.4%. So that's really all that is. What you want to really get into is the details within each unit. So you can see that this sample student, Dar, has done a little bit of Unit 1. About 26.2% of it is completed. To see the details of Unit 1, you're going to go to this right here where it says Summary. 
click the down arrow and you can click on any unit. We're of course just going to click on unit one for now. And you can see how they've been doing so far. So they took three quizzes, just so you can see the three different scenarios of things you can do with their quizzes. So at this point, this student took quiz 1.1.5. Up here tells you how many points it was out of. This quiz was out of 10 points and they earned a 10 out of 10. Down here is where it says the score that they earned. So they got a 100% on that quiz, which is fantastic. Then they moved along, they skipped over the practice for now, and they took the next quiz and they only got a 6 out of 10. Now on Apex, it's set up so that if students fail a quiz twice, they can't continue without the quiz being unlocked. So there's a couple different things that you can do to help them move forward and progress in the course. If you feel that they understand the content and it wouldn't benefit them to go through, like maybe it was worded funny or something like that, you can give them a point by coming here and just changing the grade. I just hit backspace and typed in a seven and then you can press the save button up here. Okay, I'm gonna leave it as a six to show you a couple of the things you can do. So that's one of the things you can do, type in a passing grade, give them a point if they read it wrong, or sometimes even if um, it's a fill in the blank question and they like spelled it wrong, but they knew the right word, you might wanna give them a point for that. It's entirely up to you as the teacher. I'm just showing you all the things that you can do. So something else you can do, if they're really not understanding this topic and you'd rather just go through the quiz with them, like on your own and you don't want them to retake the quiz, you want to like sit down during your office hours and meet with them, whatever you want to do to go over it instead, you can allow them to pass through that grade by pressing this arrow. This arrow will stop that roadblock and even though they failed it, it'll allow them to progress to the next quiz. So that's what that arrow does. If you want them to take it again, they can take it over and over and over again until they pass it. That's what this button is. So this one also was failed. They took the next quiz. They got a 6 out of 10. That's 60% not passing. If you want them to retake it, you would press this like double arrow circle button and it'll reset the quiz for them and make sure you press save. Once you do that, it's like they never took it and they're going to just start over and take it again. Okay. So what you can do with every quiz, and I can't do it with this one anymore um, because I reset it. Actually, I probably can. Yeah. So anytime you want to see their um, what they did wrong on a quiz or what questions they got wrong, you can click double click in this box on any of the quizzes. You can do it for this one. It does not matter which one you do it for. I'm just going to do it for this one. Um, and it shows you when they took it. So this student spent 0.2 minutes on it, which is not great. You can see that they very, I, I took this, so I very quickly just like skipped through. Um, I wanted to fail it on purpose to show you all of this, but they should take a lot longer than this on each quiz. Um, <clears throat> it tells you it's out of 10 points up here. To get mastery, to move on, you have to get seven out of 10 and so on. Um, and it tells you that this is the grade that they earned. This is the date and time that they took it. So that helps you see when they last accessed this specific assignment. But if you click on that, because it is a clickable um, thing, you click on it and then you scroll down, it'll show you exactly what questions they got wrong. So question one, that green check mark means they got it right, which is great. Question two was right. And then question three was incorrect. So it'll show you the answer that they picked. This is the wrong one. This was supposed to be the right answer. So you can see what they picked why they got it wrong, what they should have picked, and you can go over it with them this way. Um, so that's how you can see what they did right and wrong on the quiz. So this one was only five questions, so getting two wrong brought you to a six out of ten, which is kind of a bummer. But again, if you reset it for them, they'll just take that five question quiz again really quickly. But that's how you can see like the details of each quiz. For the practices, if you choose to have the students do that, they would, again, submit it to you as the written assignment. You would grade it, and here is where you would type in that grade. So let's say they got a 5 out of 5 on this one, 4 out of 5 on this one. Just make sure you press Save when you're done, and it'll submit those grades overall. Of course, my Wi-Fi has been weird all day, so it's not going to actually load, but that's how you would type those in. I'm just going to refresh it to show you one more thing on this page. Um... I'm so impatient with my technology. <laughs> okay, just going back to unit one where we were before. Oh, it did save it, so that's good. It actually loaded before I refreshed it. Um, they'll finish going through everything. Once they have a grade for all of these things, just like this, they're going to end up at the test. This icon right here shows that the test is locked. They cannot take it until you unlock it. So if you don't care 
if they just continue on and continue on, you can go through all of the units and unlock them as you go. So this one's unlocked. The student can take it whenever they want now. If you prefer that you know right before the student takes the test, they have to reach out to you. Then you have to log on right away and just press that unlock button for them, and then they'll be able to take the test. Okay, so that's really about it for the grade book overall. Um, if you ever want to see their grades, I'm sorry, this isn't loading very well. If you ever want to see their grades overall, it's like the bigger picture with all the units. Oh, I don't know why it's doing that. Um, you can click on their name. Of course it would do this while I'm recording. It doesn't always do this. This is a fluke. There we go. You can click on their name. It'll bring you to this page eventually. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry. So if this page were to load, it would show you all of the grades on everything for all of the units throughout the course. Um, it doesn't look like it's going to load for me, so I'm just going to show you that you could click on that. It'll show you their grades on literally everything. It's like the grade course for the whole unit all in one. Here we go. So the date that it was recorded, when they did everything, we did it all today. These are the grades that they got on everything, and of course they didn't take the test yet, so it kind of shows you where they left off. So this helps you see when the last date that they did anything was. This is very, very helpful for seeing if they're like working every day, if they've taken like a 10-day hiatus, anything like that. Um, so we went over the grade book. We can, um, oh, one other thing that you can do, um, whoops, go to NTMS, go back to that grade book. Just one more thing that I wanted to show you, and I'll go straight to unit two to show you this. You can excuse them from assignments. So if you don't really care for um, this quiz, you want to give them something else as an alternative, or you want to like do something during office hours instead, or really like maybe you prefer this quiz instead, you can just simply type in EX for any assignments you don't want them to do, and it'll just give them the green check mark that they've completed it. It won't contribute to their grade at all. It'll just be like it doesn't exist. So typing in an EX excuses them from any assignment that you feel they do not need to do. Um, if you ever want to check out the quiz itself before they take it, you can do that in the first page I showed you, or you can do it straight from the gradebook if you click on the quiz itself. So again, I just clicked on this button, and it brought me to quiz 2.2.5. If you press preview, you can go through it. And up here, I always have this selected to show the answers. When you scroll through, you can see all of the sample questions and the correct answer is highlighted. So what's kind of nice about APEX, when you reset these quizzes, it gives them different questions. So you'll notice this is question 1A, underneath it is 1B. They're not going to receive both of those in one quiz. If they take the first quiz, they might get the question 1A, and then if you reset it or they take it a second time, they might receive this question instead. So they're not getting the same questions over and over again. So this is where you can see what the quiz is on, the exact questions that it's asking, the exact readings that it's giving, and so on. If you want more details on the quizzes, you can do that with the practices as well. If I click on a practice, I would just click on that same button off to the side to preview it, and it'll show you what the practice is about. You can press show answers if you want like their sample answers. This is also how you can grade them. This is actually very helpful. I'm sorry I didn't show you this before. Um, to see the practice itself, you can just click on this. To click show answers, we'll show you how you can grade them. So this is the sample response for a question. Um, you would want theirs to be similar to that, and it does give you a rubric. You can use your own. It's entirely up to you. This is just to help you. It gives you like an answer key as a sample and the sample rubric. Um, one last thing I want to show you for this quick 15-minute video, so we're almost out of time, is if you go up to the menu and click on students, you can type in your student's name. I'm just going to type in this sample student, which was Dar, and if you click on that student, it'll show you the last time they logged on. If you click on this right here, I'm going to click it for English. The student has worked on English for 20 minutes so far. The last date they were on was June 22nd. If you click on this right here, it'll show you how long they worked on each thing. So they were on assessments for 12 minutes and 5 seconds. Instruction is the assignments itself, so like the quizzes, the tests, and so on. That was only about 6 minutes today. And other is like when they're on the home screen itself. Okay, that is your quick... Um, 
15 minute introduction to Apex. Um, I hope it was very helpful to you and your best bet is to just go around, click buttons and get the best practice in that you can. All right, good luck. I hope you have a great summer.